Well, hello, hello, fam bam leaders. It feels like it has been a long while. <laughs> and if you haven't followed me on social media, if you're not familiar with the community tab here on the channel page, you can check it out on Instagram and Facebook I posted. It's been quite a crazy month. And it's one of those months where you have to say, be careful what you wish for, but at the same time, I truly, truly believe that life works in ways to conspire for us and sort of grant us what we ask for. And I'm always often asking to improve in resilience, to learn how to cultivate more peace and forgiveness and communication. And so life provides. And sometimes those provisions are exercising and exhausting, but always, always, a, uh, a light on some sort of lesson or some sort of growth or area that um, just inspires me more. So this month we've had a lot going on. We've had a lot of visitors. We've had a lot of crazy things happen both personally and in business and it ended with a finale, you know, fireworks and all. Uh, my husband ended up going to the hospital for uh, intestinal twisting. It's known as vulvalis, and it's not something that's a big surprise because long ago, not so long ago, but some of you guys may have remembered back in 2013, he went in for an emergency surgery, and that was really scary because we had no idea what was going on and it was a whole week of craziness and I had a baby and they were both sick. I had a newborn and, and a, t a toddler and it, they were both in diapers and both sick and it was just so crazy. I realized in that moment that I have a tendency to get really sharp and to like put my big girl panties on in a crisis. And I, th I think most of us really, we have that we have that level-headedness about us where something happens or we're overwhelmed and we just kind of step up to the plate and show up. But at the same time, it's something that can really burn us out and can really take a lot from us and feel totally unfulfilling and like a train wreck really if the resources aren't in balance. And oftentimes you can't prepare for these things. So what do you do? How do you stay alive? How do you stay afloat? And how do you come out of it feeling like a goddess in shining armor or whatever, whatever you want to say. And it, it's really not that glamorous, I'll be honest. Um, but to come out feeling proud of yourself and come out feeling like you're walking away with something more, even though there was an imbalance or some sort of energy depletion. And how do you really cope and survive as best as possible. These are the thoughts that go through my head when I'm going through the crisis, when I'm coming out of it, when I am reflecting on it. I mean, these things are so important, especially when you live or want to live and strive and achieve for more. There's a lot more spinning top hats or tops or whatever you call it, a lot more spinning wheels um, in the whole gizmo of things. And so many things can come tumbling and cause so many things to collide at the same time. Um, we often think that more money, more uh, abundance, more privilege equals more freedom and more opportunity. And while that's true, it comes with an immense amount of responsibility, an immense amount of having to step up to a certain level to maintain all of these things, whether you own a business or whether you have children or whether you're trying to establish a new life, doing something different or leveling up, um, all these things require energy. So how do you maintain all of that, especially in a crisis? And what do you do if it occurs? Because more than likely once in a while, a crisis is bound to occur. So I thought I would share the things that I learned with you during my moments of crises in my life. Um, and I feel like I go through a lot of crises and maybe that says something, but um, uh, I have learned a lot and I feel like I get better at it each time. And so hopefully this provides you with more value in your own life and when things go a little haywire once in a while. So the first thing that I found is the most important, like the most, most important out of all things is mindset. And I know some of you on Instagram took a little quiz about my number one tip for um, more energy now. It's actually sleep. But in a moment of crisis, 
especially if an emergency is happening, like when my little girl got nine stitches across her forehead because it split open at the pool. Oh my gosh. If you're a parent who's been through that, I, or worse, I mean, I, it's insane. Like your, your brain just thinks of things and it does things that you never thought it would do. Um, and the only thing I could ask was, is this 911? Is it an emergency? Like, what do we do? Like, I had no idea what to do. So um, having that clarity of mind without panic, without negative thoughts. And when, when you have somebody sitting at a hospital, in a hospital like your husband or your child that's in critical condition, it's so easy to be ridden with fear and to feel like the world is about to end and to kind of freak out. Like that's totally, totally normal. But I think in that moment, you really have to access the upper level brain, the evolved human brain that analytically says right now is not an appropriate time to panic. Right now is not an appropriate time to let all the emotions out and have validation and, and, and talk about all your fears kind of in a therapist setting. We don't really have time for that right now. And not only do we not have time, we don't have the energy for, right, for that right now. It is a healthy and it is a necessary part of the process that will come. It will come and it's important that it, that it does come. But at the moment, this is not the right time. So I'm always that person in the movie theaters that's like, you know, like that moment where two people are separate and then they find each other alive and well, but it's like in the middle of a crisis and, and then they're like, there's this moment where they get sappy and they wanna like say, I love you or I'm sorry. And I'm always like the person who's like, not now, like, get out of there, you know? So save it for later and in in a respect when you're in a crisis this is important especially I mean for me especially when I had the two kids and I'm worried and I'm concerned I can't pass that down to my kids and I, I do tell them well it's a little concerning you know or this this is important and and they can tell that it's a serious thing but as the the cornerstone of the family, of the household, of the business, in the middle of all this, in the midst of all this, I have to be the strongest foundation of centeredness, of clarity, and of strength in that moment. So just that amount of pressure, so to speak, or <laughs> level of care, it's, this is the one time that I will say it is good to put yourself off for the sake of everybody around you, especially when you hold this position. So mindset's huge and it, everything that I've talked about in the past from my journal pages to um, reading really positive things, this would not be the time to watch like a scary movie for entertainment or any super emotional movie for entertainment. Like I really stick to high vibe, high positive thoughts during this time that I'm playing, things that make me feel good and just doing everything that I can to cultivate and support that mindset during this period, including hanging out with people who are really high vibe and uplifting. This is not the time to get together with a friend who tends to bring you down or tends to expect more out of you. Um, this is the time to really hone in on ultra, ultra, ultra self-care. So number two is relax. And that can feel really hard when things are going. I mean, in these days of crisis, both times when my husband was hospitalized, um, the first time I was just trying to cope. I had sick babies. I had a newborn. I was sick and it was the first time that I had been home alone with babies and I was, we were on vacation. So I was at my mom's house and she was working and it was just so nutty. Um, I was just trying to cope. And in that moment, every day just felt like go, 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 go. This time it was the same feeling, but instead of just trying to cope, my goal was to try not to have any setbacks, even though we were waiting for this thing to occur. But that's really what we're doing is waiting. So I can spend my time waiting and worrying, expending energy worrying um, about something that hasn't yet happened, or I can spend that time and energy busying my time so that the waiting is a little less torturous <laughs> and, and try to enjoy the time. So, so I did try to make it very enjoyable for the girls. We went out to eat a lot. We got movies, we got games, and we tried to really just enjoy and we visited dad a lot 
in the hospital. And I tried to really keep up with everything from their schoolwork to our urban garden to my work work. And I really took the extra time out of you guys, which is why you haven't seen me here for a while. So thank you for allowing me the time to tend to all these things um, because the setback was very, very minimal, really. It was, it was minimal and that was really nice. So even though it's hard to find time to relax, I think it comes with that mindset, cultivating that space. Like I said, we try to have a lot of fun, but to incorporate that relaxed, energy and that relaxed mindset as you go along it can seem really difficult. I find myself sweeping the floor, just trying to get a breath. And as I'm sweeping, of course, I'm, you know, I'm getting the housework done, but trying to just be easy with myself and sweep in a way that is more enjoyable rather than trying to rush to get it done and um, trying to deep breathe with it. And instead of thinking about what I'm worried about or thinking about what the doctor said or whatever, just, just sweeping and trying to enjoy that present moment and incorporating that relaxation and then taking any moment I can to relax. So getting movies so that I can watch with the kids is kind of a way to you know, be with them, but they're entertained and I get a moment to just sit back and enjoy the film with them or sometimes just close my eyes and take a few breaths sometimes sneak my book out and read while <laughs> while they're watching a movie but it's a nice way to be together and to find ways to do that in the middle of a crisis to take care of yourself while taking care of what, what you can around you is super super important because of the way that it makes our brain brain work on energy and we're going to talk about this in a in a one of the upcoming videos. We're gonna talk about the brain and why it's so important for the brain waves to hit a certain pace or to hit certain lower levels during the day and what's happening that's keeping most of us from doing that nowadays, which is why it's so hard to feel like we have a ton of energy. Um, number three is sleep, and this is different from relax because sleep in this scenario is so hard. A lot of times um, I would visit my husband before bedtime because my mother-in-law came and helped put the kids to bed and she came and helped for a couple days and um, I would go visit my husband or that's the time where I have time to myself and I can take care of some things like work and stuff that requires more of my attention that I can't give when, when the kids are awake. Um, and just waking up every hour of the night and checking my phone or um, texting my husband and seeing how things are going and, and what happened throughout the night. So sleep can be really hard in these instances, but I will say more and more as the days go by, you realize like how imperative sleep is. It's so crucial for you to not suffer. And so sort of in a, um, in a sense of a motivating sense, like I don't wanna suffer tomorrow. I want tomorrow to feel as seamless and as light as possible. I have to get my sleep. So if you're already focused on good sleep to begin with, if you already have a good sleep cycle and sleep routine, anytime a crisis occurs, the sleep thing won't be a mega, mega problem. What is really tough is if you're struggling with sleep right now, that would be the thing that I would prioritize because it is my number one tip for more energy now um, because it is what's gonna give you the most resilience in, in any circumstance, crisis or not. So um, sleep is high, high up on that list and I'm surprised I didn't make it number two, um, but I do think the mindset thing throughout the day is so important. If you can't relax throughout the day and you're tense the whole day, then you're gonna expend so much more energy than you should or that you need to during this time that already takes a lot of energy. So um, number four is to really stay organized and prep. I, I'm not sure everybody experiences it this way, but for me, I do better in a crisis and my theory has always been because my childhood was always a crisis so I'm actually more comfortable in crisis and then regular situations I have more space and time and energy to complain and to ruminate and so um, in a crisis I feel like I really feel like we have access to this ability to really think clearly and to organize I mean a lot of times, I don't know if you've ever been in a car accident or you know something that was unexpected and kind of uh, life jolting or just a new experience that was a crisis, but you get really clear. If the panic doesn't set in, 
and you're just in that moment where you're like, what do I do? Which most of you are, you know, doers. I think the first instance or instinct is what needs to get done right now. So for me, waking up and being like, okay, I'm responsible for everything. And, and we live like pretty maxed out lives. So my husband is responsible for a lot and I'm responsible for a lot. And one of the things I realized was if I had to do this all on my own, or if my husband had a, you know, if his condition led him to a place where he's going to need extra care, there's going to be a lot of things that need cutting in order for me to just feel like more relaxed and at ease. But at the same time, really appreciative of how much we have and how much we're able to just create and do an experience on a daily basis. So, you know, waking up, the first thing is like, what do I need? And my first thought is food, me, how to take care of myself. Like I need to use a restroom, I need to start my day, I need to get dressed, I need to get food. And then the second thought is, well, how do I organize this and take care of two things at once? So I might be in the middle of brushing my teeth and I'm wiping, you know, the windows or the counters or I'm I'm picking up and organizing the shoes or you know, doing kind of doing two things at the same time. If I'm if I'm cooking a meal for myself, like, well, how can I cook a meal for everybody now? And just sort of thinking, incorporating a lot of the similar things that you do on a daily basis, but taking it one step beyond one step further so that that's not something that you have to do later and staying ahead of the game. So one of the things that I did and it felt like a mistake at first, but I was so grateful was before my husband went into the hospital, he was here, he was asleep and my, my girls were entertained with something. And I said to him, if you're good sleeping and the girls are chill, I'm gonna go run a bunch of errands. And I cleaned the whole house and I got water and I got food. I got um, actually pre-made meals uh, because, and, and then it just so happened that our family meals, cause we do the trifecta meal system, um, the, I started ordering for the family now. So we do those meals and it just so happened this was our first week of meals for the family. Cause I, before I was just doing it for myself. And it just sort of, and I got enough meals and I wasn't even thinking he was gonna go to the hospital because this happens quite a lot and he usually doesn't end up going to the hospital. But I just ended up preparing just in case. And then when it came time to the ER, I prepared his bags. I said, we've been to the hospital enough times that I know that if you need to stay overnight. I'm gonna pack two pairs of clothes. Here's your toothbrush, here's your phone charger, here's some books. And I packed everything in preparation. And that was great because it saved me having to take an extra trip to the hospital to drop all that stuff off later. It saved me having to take an extra trip carrying these five gallon jugs of three flights of stairs um, with my kids and all the groceries in tote. Like I just, prepared ahead of time and, and took the times. I think you look for those moments or those outlets where instead of taking a reprieve, like at this time, if I have space to do extra, I'm going to try to get ahead as much as possible. So later I can cut those corners. And so that's, it's almost counterintuitive to what we normally say, right? We normally say like only plan this much and don't get ahead of yourself. But if you incorporate the most important, three most important things first, which is your mindset, uh, relaxation and sleep, you shouldn't feel burnt out by doing this. So it's a balance and it's something that you have to find for yourself and figure out for yourself. That is so important. Um, number five, it's adjust things. Adjust things where necessary. Let go of certain things, you know, see what adds value to you, what doesn't. Fortunately, this time I didn't really have to adjust much. I, I don't think, I, the only compromises I made was we're gonna go out to eat and enjoy ourselves and because it's easy and it gets us out and it's fun and, and, and do movies, but we stuck to our homeschool schedule and getting the homework done. I did not stick to my work schedule as much as I wanted to, but I kept a photo shoot that I had. I, I kept that and, and did that. The first time that my husband went to the hospital, though, where this came into play was the cloth diapers. I had the kids in cloth diapers, uh, both nursing, both sick, and me sick, and my husband was away, and the first two nights was like, waking up every half hour, every hour. It was insane. I never in my life have woken up that many times in a night. And so finally, after the second night, I said, I'm, I'm not doing cloth diapers right now. I can't do it. And I went straight to the store and bought regular diapers 
because uh, they hold more and they stay more dry so the babies don't wake up and fidget as much and it was like a dream i slept better i think i only woke up five times that night and instead of like every half hour and i was like okay this is when it's okay it's those moments where i feel like you know at those really critical moments that it makes a massive difference and, and you've tried you know doing things totally and and at, at this moment you could use some help which leaves me on my last tip like take the help adjust where you need to adjust where it adds value to you not in a way that crutches you or cripples you in the future but in a way that it's actually intended to be painkillers aren't intended to pop you know into our mouths every day because we don't have the right lifestyle to support a healthy body and now we're in pain all the time painkillers are there for moments like these for moments where you need it in order to help you ease help your body etc and and same with the diapers i don't feel guilty at all for getting off the cloth diapers during that time i was very thankful at that moment that cloth diapers existed i was very thankful that western medicine existed you know and a lot of us naturalists or naturopathic home holistic type people um, really try to focus on these uh, natural remedies but there are instances where this type of help is really beneficial and adds value and saves you a lot of energy, a lot of stress, like beyond what is even equatable. So last tip number six, make sure you get that help, especially when you're in a crisis. So many people um, reach out and want to help, especially if you talk about it. Like a lot of times we don't want to express ourselves to people. We don't want to put our stuff on people. We don't want to say things to people talk about it you know when people are like are you okay or how are you doing today and you just be like i'm i'm all right you know trying to hang in there um husband got admitted to the hospital the other day and people's responses are typically like oh my gosh is there anything i can do to help i mean i probably had 20 babysitters over the course of the four days that my husband was in the hospital so it felt so good to have that help and to say yes to people exercise receiving that help because most of the time i know that you're putting out so much for yourself for your family for business for life and sometimes allowing that gift to come in return is really just rewarding and reconnecting to humanity and just really fulfilling as far as faith in humanity and, and faith in our fellow man, brother and sister. So accepting that help, letting my mother-in-law come here, letting our friend visit Brett in the middle of the day when I couldn't, um, allowing other people to just stop by and hang out. When you're in a crisis and when you are in grief or when you are in a very negative emotional state the best thing you can do is reach out and open and accept the people around you and the help that they're trying to give you you really can't say like well it has to be this specific way or or you know say that you like nobody was there for you if you're not open to receiving it and you're not you know in that mindset and state that is receptive and allowing for it so that's really huge and key because I mean, I tell you, if my mother-in-law didn't come and all this extra, you know, external positivity from both online and in my community didn't come, it, it would have felt a lot more lonely and it would have definitely felt probably a lot more stressful, but it just felt just so lighthearted and supported the whole way because of accepting and being open to that help. So this is a really long video. It was a lot. Um, there's so much more that I've learned and I could just go on for days, but I do hope that these few tips help you uh, be able to reevaluate and assess the next time you're in a crisis and just maintain more energy and more peace throughout. I appreciate you guys so much for all your support and uh, I am not going to cry because <laughs> I've been so emotional about this. Not that crying is bad, but I've been so emotional about this all month. But I just thank you guys so much for just being there and, and your outreach and your outpour and just your care. It's amazing. And I hope that um, the gifts that I've received from this experience are able to pass down to you in this knowledge, in this video. And yeah, let me know how you like it by hitting thumbs up. I don't know if the comments are back yet, but um, hit me up, DM me on any of my social media. I'm there, and I know you guys are there for us. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao for now.